This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. This is a podcast of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego. To learn more about how you can support Scripps, visit us online at scripps.ucsd.edu. The Deep Sea. Vastly unexplored, many consider it Earth's final frontier. Dark and cold, it was uninhabitable in the belief of many as recently as 150 years ago. But following ambitious expeditions in recent decades, researchers have discovered that the deep sea environment is bursting with life. Two researchers at Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego have studied these creatures and helped further our understanding of the environments in which they reside. Lisa Levin and Tony Koslow have probed the deep with a variety of tools and technologies and often come away with surprising results. While the deep sea remains of little concern to most, scientists such as Levin and Koslow say the influence of humans is reaching into the dark recesses of the ocean at an increasing rate. In the early years of ex deep sea exploration, scientists believed that there were only a handful of kinds of species. They knew all the major groups were down there, but they really had no idea of how diverse they were. Once scientists began to take quantitative samples of uh, in deep water and on the bottom, they found an amazingly large number of species. And one estimate, for example, is that there are 10 million species of very small animals living in the sediments down there, what we call the macrofauna. It's felt that perhaps the diversity rivals that of tropical rainforests. We still don't know how that diversity is supported. We do know now that there are many different kinds of habitats down there that can support different kinds of life forms. We know about seamounts, we know, we know about hydrothermal vents, we know that dead animal carcasses like whales can support specialized community, and we know that there's methane seeping from the seafloor that creates specialized communities. Levin's research includes hypoxic zones, mysterious sections of the deep sea where oxygen levels dwindle to almost nothing. The animals I study are called the macrofauna. These are animals that are retained on about a 0.3 millimeter mesh, and they include worms, clams, crustaceans, and so on. Most of these animals are not tolerant of low oxygen. The ones that are tolerant are primarily the marine polychaetes, the worms. And these animals have several adaptations. They have hemoglobin in their blood. Um, that's very good at grabbing oxygen. They also have a very elaborate surface area that will have the development of all different kinds of gills and branchy, structures that stick out from the body and make them look essentially like fur balls. Um, and that enhanced surface area provides basically access to oxygen, greater surface for diffusion of oxygen into the worms. Tony Koslow spent a decade studying deep sea life in Australia before coming to Scripps. During this time, he helped discover new details about the rich marine life on deep sea mountains called seamounts. He also became acutely aware of the human threat on the deep, especially how fishing and trawling can devastate deep sea habitats, including deep water coral reefs. The concern is that uh, in fishing these, these fishes, basically the trawls sweep not only the fish up, but also whatever else is on the bottom. So they're basically sweeping away these, these, these coral reefs with their, with their entire fauna. And uh, so there's been a great deal of concern in recent decades to conserve not only the fish, but also these uh, deep water coral reefs. In 2007, Koslow published The Silent Deep, a book about the discovery, ecology, and conservation of the deep sea. He traces the alarming threats from human pollution, which is finding its way to the deep with increasing regularity, and from climate change, as warming waters threaten to make the deep sea more acidic and reduce oxygen levels. I came to realize through my experience working in the deep sea that the deep sea was not only was uh, was uh, 
much more diverse and, and much more in danger from uh, human exploitation than people had generally recognized. And so I, I wanted to basically write about that and, and bring to people's awareness the, uh, what really is the, the, both the, the wonder and the, the uh, incredible diversity of the deep sea and also the state of the deep sea. And the, you know, the, we tend to think of the deep sea as, as being incredibly remote and, and probably the most pristine environment on Earth since it is so difficult to get to. But in fact, it's the last frontier on the planet. Most of these environments have only been discovered within the last 50 years. And, uh, and some of them are in danger of, uh, from human exploitation, uh, even before we know very much about them. I think what we don't realize is that without actually visiting the deep sea, we can be touching it. We can be having an impact on the deep sea. What humans have to realize is that any change uh, along the coastal zone, in surface waters, in circulation, in temperature, global warming for example, any, many, many aspects of climate change have the potential to influence what's going on down in the deep sea. And while the effects of that influence may not be felt for many years to come, the deep sea is part of the larger cycling of nutrients and materials within the ocean, and ultimately we will feel any changes we make down there. This has been a presentation of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego.